Hello attendees, before we begin I'd like to do a quick sound check. Can everybody indicate by using the chat button in the top right hand corner that you can hear me okay while we wait for a couple more of people to join us? Excellent, that's really good, everybody can hear. Tiago, can I just ask you to speak just to say hello so that people can hear you also. Hello, hello everyone. I hope everybody can hear me. Tracy, can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear, Tiago. That's brilliant. Okay, cool. Yep, and people are saying that they can hear you also. So that's good. I'm just waiting for a couple more people to uh, join us and then we'll, we'll kick off this webinar today. So bear with me while we just wait uh, a few seconds more. Okay, we've we've had a few more attendees join us, so uh, I'm going to uh, start the webinar. So, hi everybody, and welcome to our series of webinars where we focus on new products and solutions, new functionality, process improvements, and very shortly some live training sessions. This is our seventh webinar, and today we are going to to look at upgrading your 32-bit reporting to 64-bit. Your host today, I'm Tracy Adams. I'm Sales and Marketing Manager for Enbridge Consulting. And very shortly, uh, Tiago Bruno, our technical consultant, will take you through some of the areas that you need to consider when upgrading from 32 to 64 bit. Most of you have found the, the chat button in the top right hand corner. If you have a question throughout the session, please feel free to, to question us and place that in the chat button so that we can pick it up during our Q&A session at the end of the, the webinar. We'll try and pick up as many of those as possible, but uh, we may not get through them all. Um, so if there are any that um, we don't pick up on, please drop me an email and uh, we'll, we'll be in touch with answers to those shortly. Now I'm going to keep the intro brief as some of you will have already attended the webinars in the past. But for those of you that are new to Enbridge, here is a quick overview of just some of the solutions that we provide and the services that we provide. Enbridge Consulting is a unit for partner and has been providing services to business world customers since 2009. However, our experience of the business world solution spans decades. We offer an end-to-end -end service from business system selection right through to managing your ERP solution via our help desk once it's gone live. Our other services include training, e-learning, project management, integration and development. We have what's called smart solutions. Our smart solution service has grown from a desire to provide our customers with packaged solutions delivering great results quickly, but without the expense of complex bespoke customizations. We'll be running more webinars regarding these solution in the coming months. And we've also already done a number of webinars. So if you're interested in getting a link to some of those webinars, then please get in touch and we'll be happy to share those with you. Now, if I could just ask a, a quick question before we launch into to the webinar, if I could understand your current knowledge of upgrading Unit 4 reports to 64-bit, have any of you started the process, um, in, got involved in the process, or what, what your idea is today um, about what you want to learn? If you could pop that in your chat button, that would be appreciated. So we can try and cover off any requirements throughout the session. Okay, some of you haven't started yet, so this is a, a good place to start. Um, as Tiago will, will mention throughout the, the webinar, there should be hints and tips, reasons why you should start looking at this now. 
Um, there's quite a few of you with no experience of actually upgrading the reporting. So again, we'll try and cover, cover off as much as we can. However, as I've said before, we'd be happy to discuss offline uh, any of your individual requirements or any of your individual concerns. So by all means, get in touch. So again, you know, there's quite a few there, very little exposure, uh, not upgraded any reports before. So hopefully this will give you an insight into uh, how you go about things. Just before um, we go into that webinar, I just want to let you know about our next uh, webinar. Um, it's to do with integration. There will be more information sent out to you very shortly. Um, there is a link here. Please uh, request that and we can get a copy over to you very shortly. Without further ado, I'd like to pass you over to Tiago, who's going to take you through the webinar. Over to you, Tiago. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Tracy. Uh, I'm just gonna share my screen in here so I can show my presentation to all you. Okay, I hope everyone is now able to see my screen. Is that correct? Okay, cool. Okay, so yeah. let's um, let's let's go uh, and check this um, reporting thirty-two to sixty-four bit. Well, um, basically, this is um, this is presented to you by you know Smart Solutions, which is uh, the department here in uh, in in um, in Ambridge, as uh, Tracy just said. Uh, we always try to go the extra mile in business world. We do some customizations in, in ACT. Uh, we do integration with third party legacy systems and some technical solutions in which this reporting end up um, making part of. So we have some, uh, some of the stuff uh, that we have uh, that Tricia already showed. So we have some, um, some cool customizations that we do like um, connecting the document archive to SharePoint connector, you know, some action overview extension working on it. We have some timesheet importing. We have some Google authentication, a bit double single sign on with Google authentication, and we have, uh, you know, reporting. Now, 32 to 64 bit reporting. Now, this webinar is just to give you an overview. It's not intended to be a course. I'm not going to explain you all the details. I'm going to try to, uh, as an overview, try to give you um an, an idea what's the difference between the 32 and 64 bit uh and how that fits in in reporting and it, what needs to be what needs to be done so basically uh just go for the architecture the difference between 64 bit um and, and 32 and 64 bit so the application speed uh is is, is faster on 64 bit application in a 64 bit operating systems compared to a 32 bit version of the same operating so the difference is that on a 32-bit mode, we can we only get like eight registers on the RAM, and which on the 64-bit uh, we we end up aligning uh, 64 registers. So basically, on a 64-bit architecture, allows for processes and softwares to allocate more than four gigs of RAM when they are processing stuff. So bigger blocks can send be sent to memory. Uh, so it's not related with the CPU speed but mostly the amount that the software can put on RAM memory so then it can process and get information get information kind of uh, kind of faster so so uh, business world supports both 32 and 64 bit business server in which they can fully coexist and run at the same time environment without the two servers conflicting. So, for example, you can have a 32-bit business server uh, to uh, to work with servers, control servers like the TPS, the WS, and the workflow, and you can have you know separated 64-bit business server to serve like report queues. So, where that leads us, uh, so on the management console. So, we, if we log in on the management console, this is what our uh, business server in 64 bits is located, the installation path or the execution path. And this is our business uh, server in, uh, in 32 bits and installation uh, folder uh, for it's more or less in the exact same way that other Windows applications end up installing in different, in different folders of 32 to a 64 bit. 
So the server controllers or the server queues that are assigned to those business servers um, are, are instances are based on server numbers and, and the architecture type. So it means that two business server instance can run at the same time uh, if they have different architecture. So we can have both architectures and server queues and report queues working uh, at the same time on the same server. Now, what we gonna we gonna talk today is regarding the report queues. So we have a 32-bit business server that end up having the default report queue for the 64-bit architecture, and which has on its configuration on the environment variables. In this case, we 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 we, we, will, we will want to drop the files in the customized reports of the uh, of this environment variable for for this 64-bit. And on the report queues for the 32-bit, we'll have a different customized reports folder that will uh, hold uh, those files. So uh, in, in Agresso, when we are have a report, we end up having the server queues in which then we can set up if my report or my server process that runs a report is going to run on a on a, on a 32 or a 64 bit server queue so this is in here in the front end of the system that's where we end up saying which report queue i'm going to run which then it's attached to um, a 32 or 64 bit business server so um in abw since 56 uh self-service which is now the business world web has been entirely in 64 bit since 5.7, uh, the business world start to have the options of running servers, uh, or running server queues in 32 uh, and 64 bits as well at the same time. Now, uh, why should we upgrade uh, the reports? Um, well, the architecture uh, that uh, the, 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 the architecture of the reporting uh, it's much superior. You know, allows you to create more loosely uh, reports rendering. So the extraction of the data, you know, the creation of the data set, which we call the report architecture, is completely separated from the report layout, which is uh, what we call the report designing. So, um, so we end up having a RRX file that can create a RRX file, which ended up being a composite file that we can create all the data set and then we can reuse that to, to then have uh, arcs or accelerators or moderators and all the reports that are migrated from uh, 32-bit to 64-bit are retro compatible all down to 553 as long as we have report engine 8.2. So um, if we start migrating our reports now, we will have we will be in a better stage when we upgrade you know our server queues from 32 to 64 bit uh because there's those reports will already be uh migrated so we don't have to worry about um we don't have to worry about you know uh, um, uh, having any issues because we end up having a bit more time spent to work on it so so this is what an image of the uh, of 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 the differences is so on the on the thirty two bit report we end up having our report which can be you know an arc report an accelerator or a moderator that does the SQL uh, statements or it does the queries directly to the database. Now some of you might not know, but until that new option of uh, report architect shows on the menu on the on the on the on the, on the menu access on settings on Agresso, you could actually put update statements on, on the report. So if your report will end up having updates to the database, since your report is actually going directly to the database to query, uh, he, the report was actually able to do update statements. Now, uh, they end up finding that and they end up changing the whole thing. And, and, and now, um, and now the uh, the new architecture for the reporting in 64-bit end up working in a little bit different way. So instead of just the RPX, we have a composite file, which we call an RERX file. The RERX file is going to have an RE SQL file. So this SQL file will be responsible to have the syntax and to query the database. And it's also going to be responsible to do uh, other, other queries um on the data set so the re sql file uh th has the has the syntax to query the database and in return it's going to build up an, a data set which is on xml so it's going to build up a data set and then 
the same RDSQL file. Uh, we're going to have some syntaxes to update, to handle, to do some manipulation on the data on the XML. And our reports are going to query directly that data set. So instead of having the reports querying directly the database, we have a file that goes to the database, only allowed to do select statements, bring the information, populate a small data set, um, build up uh, the information, and then we have our reports querying directly the um, the data set. Now, this is done on Report Studio. Let's just have a look of what the Report Studio looks like. So this is what the Report Studio looks like. It's a little bit more complex than the um, than the ARC reporting. Uh, so we have, you know, the main options here on the top. We're going to have a dot file. So this is where the data set is going to be. Uh, so after querying it, so we have the data explorer in which we can see the data this actually this is actually also cool because when we are actually developing the reports uh we we we, we can have the report actually we can bring some data and then you can bring this rerx file this composite file to locally or to whatever we need and actually develop and design the layout with the, with the data so we we can be actually working offline so this is the dat uh, file, which ends up having, which an, it's an XML file, which ends up having the data set. Then we have the RESQL file, which is uh, the file in this composite that has, you know, the syntaxes. We're going to see this a little bit later. We're going to declare and, and do the main queries. And well, on the package, yeah, we do have the good old RPX. So what's going to happen is that the RPX mainly is going to um, is going to is going to um, handle the the layout and uh, and hide and show stuff. So it's going to mainly do um, cosmetic and layout stuff because we we're going to want to do all the all the hard part and all the handling on the um, on the RESQL file. So for the arc migration, so so regarding the database interaction, so all scripts. All scripts that need interaction within the database will need to be moved from the RPX file into the RESQL file. So this will drive the data extraction and populate uh, the data set. So what does that mean? It means that I'm going to open a good old RPX file. I'm going to go to the query. Okay, though so this is the query that we were having to you know to bring our information for our RPX file and I'm going to open the script. So this is the script that we were having a good old script. And then this is a side dish query, as I call it, the side dish query to get the bank information, to get some clearing codes and bank information. So we were doing all the queries in here. So what's going to happen is all those queries are going to go up to here. So I'm just going to scroll in here. So the syntax is going to change a little bit. So instead of just the query, we're going to make the dot query main, and we're going to have the, the main query in here doing the, uh, doing the whole thing. And we're going to have you know that side dish query that we were getting the description, the bank account, and the clearing code. So that, that query is going to come up to here. So there's a, there's a couple of, of new syntaxes. Uh, we're going to see a couple. Uh, this is not, you know, as I said, this, the intention of this is to show you what needs to be done. So I, I, unfortunately, I cannot tell you the whole syntax, but uh, we do have a reporting course. Uh, and if you guys want, you can just uh, give a shout to, to Tracy. We do have a reporting course in which then we end up uh, having some sessions and, and explaining all these detailed syntaxes. So now all these uh, queries are going to move from the RPX in here uh, to the RESQL and, well, build up the, the, the data set. After uh, we we can then refresh and connect to the database, and that queries the uh, is 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 responsible to build up and to refresh. And we're gonna you know we're gonna have to log in and we're gonna refresh the data, and we're gonna have you know all our data in here. Now, if the RESQL file is the one responsible to call to the database, it means that our RPX file is gonna select uh, the main query like. The main the main query of the of the report is going to select instead of the database is going to select the it's going to um, query the data set in this case the main query is going to you know do the select star from expand main so it's that's a command to, to to bring back the um, the information from the um, from the main query that we defined on RESQL and on the script uh, 
since we have our since we have our query on the aria SQL, so we're gonna we're gonna remove it from here but since it's on the data set and it's already uh, uh it's already in there what happens is cre it's it's created as as a field so instead of we can, we can create formulas in in rpx and all that but now since the aria SQL is responsible to create the data set it means that the side dishes are no longer going to be formulas but they're actually going to be fields now um the name of the table that we end up creating in creating it's going to be in here and then underscore and the name of the field so i'm just going to go back a little bit so i can show you on the resql file what this is so in this case we are you know uh selecting this command add row and in add row bank pay so i'm creating a new table called bank pay and then i'm going to do all this select statement and then I'm going to have bank pay, which is going to have some rows and some fields. So the table is going to be bank pay and the fields. Okay, let me just move forward on this. And the field is going to be right after the underscore. So in this case in here, over here. So the bank pay is the name of the table, underscore, and the name of the field. So it's going to be table, underscore, the name of the field. So this will be fields and not and not formulas because it's already on the on the data set. So uh, another thing I want to show you in here as well is that it's not just squaring and selecting. So the Yaria SQL file is where you interact directly with the database but at the same time it's where we interact with the data set as well so we can create tables like we do in here with the add row we create some 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 paid tables in which we populate with some information we get from the database but in here i'm using this update command in here to update a field on the main query so along with bringing the information, uh, we also use the RESQL file to update information and to uh, and to uh, uh, play a, play around and handling the data on the um, with the data set is, it, itself. So on the syntax changes now. There's a couple of changes on the syntax. I'm not going to show them all, but we do have some differences in the constructions, declaring the parameters which now it's all going to be on the RSQL and some macros. So if I'm going to get this down and I'm going to show the RPX, so we're going to set, um, we're going to set the constructor. So it's going to be just use data set only because our RPX is no longer uh, allowed to query the database, only the, the data set. And to declare the parameters, instead of declaring those parameters on the R RPX, on the, on the ARC report, we're going to declare the parameters on the RESQL file in here. So there's going to be a little bit change on the syntax. So it's dot declare, then the name of the, the, of the parameter, then the data type, and some, 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 some example files, some default values like uh, in here, I'm, I'm, so, you know, I'm declaring the rep name, saying it's a string, and then I'm populating with a value. So as uh, on the other reports, if you run it locally, it's going to grab this value if you refresh the data or when you're running the report on the, on the server, it's going to substitute the default value that you have in here with the value that is coming from the, um, the value that is coming from the, uh, the, the, the server process, you know, that, that, kicks, the, that kicks the report. Uh, the macros, like we know it, like getting the description of an attribute value or getting a specific address, now it has, uh, now it's, it's a little bit different. So instead of, you know, us putting the, uh, the, the script on the RPX, we, we, we add a little bit more of syntax in here. So if I want to get the description of a specific attribute in here, just to get you in context, I'm looping the main table, which it's created by the main query, and I'm um, sorting or grouping by customer name. And then I'm uh, adding a table or creating a table, which the add row command gives me a table, and I'm saying, okay, AG, AGR get description, okay, client, and this value, which might be the attribute value, uh, the attribute, and then the attribute value. So this command in here ends up coming from the the table so dollar sign 
um, column end up being the tag that shows us that this is coming from the table. So it's a it end up being a field. So this is how um, we end up getting the description or even to get the address. So, you know, we end up substituting that um, the AGR get address that you, the AGR dot get address that we were having on the RPX, we end up substituting with, uh, with this one. So then on the, uh, on the script, if, um, uh, you know, the entity name, um, you know, that, that, that AGR get description for that entity, in this case, it was the attribute that we were getting. So we have a table, they ended up creating say, entity name underscore description because it's the description of the AGR got that, get, that get description. So that's, um, it's, it's going to be set as a field and not as a formula. And then it's going to be on the data set as well. Um, okay. So if, uh, um, I hope everyone, uh, still continues to hear me and I'm online with everyone. You are indeed Tiago. Loud and clear. Okay, cool. Okay. So, um, other, other syntaxes, um, changes, uh, that we, 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 we have. So when creating tables, handling data in the data set and even getting files or, or, or logos again, for full information, just check our reporting courses because, um, I'm, I'm not going to be able to, you know, in a, in 30 minutes or so, just bring the whole thing in here, even because all you guys end up having different reports with different objectives and different, um, picking up different things. So it's, it would, it would be really complex to, um, to, to, to approach all the, um, all the examples now to, uh, to create, uh, to create tables. Um, if we need to create, so in the ARIA SQL, so if we need to create an extra table on, on Agresso to bring information, so we end up just creating a table and then we insert that table with information. So, okay. So we are playing around in here with the, with the data set, creating a bit more of information. So instead of setting those. Uh, select statements, those side dish queries, you know, on your report to bring the information. You just, you actually create that information on the data set and, 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 you know, and then, then just on the report, the report just goes and drinks the information from, from the data set. So, um, this is where we end up creating some, uh, some, some, some tables and some extra information so we can play around. We can even use some if statements to bring information if this or bring information, uh, if that. Um, and, um, even if you want to get some images, like in this case, I have this example of this RERS, um, RER, RERX file in which, uh, I'm just doing a, a query and populating uh, some information. I'm actually using the AGR get document. And when I'm, when I'm, when I'm loading and getting this, I, I actually, uh, and along with the data, I can actually get the images. Uh, so the, the data set is pretty powerful. So we can actually create some really, some really cool, uh, some really cool things in here. So what remains on the, uh, on the, on this arc, uh, on this arc migration, what remains? So controlling the layout end up being the same formatting. We can still continue to use formulas and, and the preview. Now the preview is going to be, um, uh, since we end up having that RERX file. And as soon as you refresh the database, we have the data set. We can just bring the whole file in. It can actually preview. So when in, in, in view it offline. So when you actually, you know, building the, the report and making your tests and your previews, you're actually just going down to the, to the data set. So, Opening, uh, open the area, uh, the RPX file in here, uh, on this, on the script. So on the layout, if we're going to have to hide, you know, if you're going to have to give the command visible, true or false, if you're going to have to hide or show or do some stuff in here. So we just continue to do it in here. So formatting, changing the layouts, saying when it's true or false, hiding stuff, you know, uh, the defining the group adders and the group footers, you know, um, uh, expanding or shrinking, uh, whenever you want. So that layout uh, is done, is done on the, um, uh, is done on the RPX. Now the preview is going to be more or less the, the same thing because what's going to, what's, what, what you're going to preview is the information that is on the, on the data set. 
So, uh, so I'm going to close this bit in here. So that's what hap That's actually what what happens in here. So the arc report, or you know, the reporting in 32 bit instead of and even the accelerators, the accelerators end up having less changes. And we're gonna we're gonna um, we're gonna just look at those changes uh, quickly uh, after this. So the report end up in 32 bits and that's connecting directly to the data set. And in here in 64 bit, you end up having the RERX file that brings the data, populates a data set, and then you can create an RPX, you can create an accelerator, or you can create an order rater with the same. So it's not all on the same time. So I'm not saying that we have an ERX file that can output to several uh, different to different types, uh, but we can set uh, the same um, RERX with the same data set. So then you can just uh, duplicate the file, and then in the end you're going to output to different to different. Um, to different reporting layouts. Now on accelerator, uh, you know, the parser is gonna, you know, on options dialog, we're just gonna say an SQL parser that's gonna be data set uh, only. Uh, well, the data set database select commands that we, we have uh, are gonna have to be replaced with uh, data set select. The RESQL file and the seeking card end up being the same to gather the data. So what we've been seeing so far on the RESQL file to bring the data and manipulate the data on the data set end up being uh, the exact same thing. Every time on the select from table that we do on the accelerator, so it's gonna look for the data set and not for the database. So we need to have that in mind. And when you do a select star from expand main, just like on arc to get the main, uh, the main table. Now, setting the parameters, on the accelerator, we're just saying set my params and then you know the, the default value. And on the accelerator, on the on the 64-bit, uh, we we will have to declare the parameters on the RESQL file. And then on the accelerator, set that my parameter is my param is equal to dollar sign uh, exclamation mark my param. So in here, we're just saying that dot set my param is equal to whatever we're declaring here on the RESQL. So previously on the accelerators, field name and parameter name end up being more or less in the same structure between uh, those brackets. Now we have dollar sign colon for field name and dollar sign exclamation out for parameter name, meaning that instead of doing the select client from ECR client where client equals client between the brackets, we, we're going to have to, you know, change it a little bit for this. Uh, another change will be on the, on the querying the balance table. So the query balance previously, you would just put the query balance and, you know, put all, you know, set up relation division, relation cost, relation section cost. So setting up these commands in here and then defining the columns on the details. Uh, so you would create the query and define some syntax on the accelerator itself. Now, right now what's gonna happen is you're gonna have to create the data set. Yeah, and then you use the AGR get balance to get uh, those values from the table and you set up the relation bit in here and then on the accelerator, well, you're gonna select from the table that you just create on the uh, on the on the RESQL file, so um, so it's 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 a little bit different in here. Um, I I I've been talking with several people in which they end up finding that well, upgrading uh, the accelerators for the sixty four bit end up having some constraints. So I talked with a couple of, of people that are really expert on accelerators in which they still use accelerators and try to have the, those accelerators either running standalone, you know, like, like we end up doing or, or having on 32 bit because there's a loss of, of functionalities regarding in how those are getting some, some, some information. So, um, I, 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 I'm not a, an accelerator expert, so uh, I don't know how far uh, we can go with the accelerators, but from what I've heard and for I've been uh, discussing with several colleagues, they are still continue using the accelerators the, the, the good old way because there's a bit more of flexibility. Now, 
before we wrap this, and I, I'm sorry, but we, we cannot go for the world orator. Well, world orator ended up being, um, uh, it's a bit more simple, but uh, we're not gonna focus on the world orator. So right now this is for more like the differences between the 32 and 64 bit, but I do need to have to show you the extra designer. Now, um, the extra designer is developed by DevExpress and it's, it's a new report, it's a new reporting tool for static reporting. Uh, it doesn't allow any script at all on the layout, and um, we should uh, we should consider to um, we should consider to use this tool if you are creating new reports. Uh, aggressive report creator will continue to be supported by Unit Four, but they're not going to develop any new features. In which this new reporting tool is developed by DevExpress, so it's going to bring new options and new and new features. So. Um, I know that it's simple to continue old technology, but maybe it's time for us to, you know, since we're gonna have to look at this new 64-bit architecture and maybe change stuff a little bit, maybe it's good for us to even uh, look at the new technology, even because we don't want to, uh, I'm just opening in here the report engine and show uh, how the extra report, so actually the extra report <coughs> is in here to be created. So let's take, sometimes to understand that um, we, we we shouldn't leave the leap or the space between uh, versions of the technology to be you know that far we right now we are actually dealing with a customer that is making a, a upgrade from a really really old version to milestone six in which we are facing those issues that you know everyone faces when when it's upgrading from a really really old version so uh so i i, I just want to i just want to show you guys in here how a really quick view for the extra report so i have uh okay so i have my uh, res file so i define some parameters in here i declare some stuff i make some queries and i end up bringing my my data so i refreshed i brought my data i have my data explorer that shows me all the information based on the query that i did and i even have it separated and all that it's really cool so i have a way of you know checking the data set and i'm going to create uh, an extra report so I'm creating the extra report so this this report layout is much more it's it's really look like the arc uh, designer so the aggressive report created is it's really um, you can you can notice the, the 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 it's really similar. What we cannot do in here is do any kind of of, of scripting at all. Now uh, you know the fields, the you know the drag and drop stuff that we have in here, grouping, you know, creating different adders and footers and grouping and all that's all going to be in here. Now since it ends up being a report that it comes from the composite, you uh, you know you are able to find the fields in here. And then you just drag and drop the fields, and uh, you know the fields end up having the names of the columns in the tables, just like on the arc report. And we also have you know a, you know print preview in which you can view well, you know how things are and all that. So you can have a really cool uh, way. Well, it's, it's it's just a preview, so it's exact same way like in the old arc one. And we also have an HTML view. If um, I'm, I'm not 100% sure if you can actually just use this to publish it on your on a kind of a website or something, but I assume that to view this in HTML it might be you know to to use or to you know to to publish in a, in a website or in a way that HTML can be seen. So the report designer uh, from DevExpress, the extra reports, um, Unit Four does advise and 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 and. and kind of encourages uh, if you are doing a new report try to use the extra and try to take a moment to uh, you know, to use the new reporting tool because it's much better to start earlier with new technology so that um, as soon as they deprecated the others and stop delivering support for old versions at least you already know um, the art way around here so uh, so this is the extra designer that um, the extra designer developed by DevX. So it's not it's not created by a unit four, just like you know, like the uh, the aggressive report created. Um, but it's a reporting tool, which I think is it's not 
it's 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 a bit it's a bit yeah, it's similar as the aggressive report creator, but it doesn't it doesn't uh, have all the scriptings. Now uh, I'm going to hand over this session to uh, Tracy for the she's she's going to uh, have Q and A session. <laughs> so uh, are you there, Tracy? I am here. Okay. I'm loud and clear. I hope. Thank you very much, Tiago. I hope everybody found that demonstration useful. Uh, if you could use your chat buttons once again, just to, to ask a few questions, um, and we can pick those up uh, very shortly. While you do that, I'm going to quickly share some of our brochures with you, and also uh, a link to our survey feedback, uh, which uh, you'll see very shortly. But um, if you could just pop your questions into the, the chat box and we'll pick up those in a second. I can see we've had um, a question already and um, I can answer this one. Uh, will a recording of this session be released? Uh, yes, it will. Um, it usually takes a couple of hours, usually 24 hours to post it, but it will be available uh, as a private link on YouTube. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, any more questions there with regard to the actual demonstration? Uh, let me see. Yes, there's a, a couple coming through now. OK, OK. So let's take the, the first question. Um, my understanding was that Unit 4 wanted users to migrate off ARC and move to the extra report tool. They were phasing out ARC. What do you know about this timeframes and details? Now, I know Tiago did mention uh, about the extra report tool um, in the session. Um, so Tiago, does that answer the, the question, do you think? Um, well, the uh, yeah, for, so for, for this first question, I was trying to know when it's going to be phased out. So I think because a lot of people are still using aggressive report creator, they are still uh, supporting it. Uh, but yeah, as I said, and uh, as uh, Alan is, is saying, yeah, they are pushing people to use the extra report tool because they're not going to create any more features and they're not going to develop any more features for the aggressive report creator. So they are pushing people to use the extra report tool. Now, the extra report tool doesn't allow any scripting at all. And there's a lot of people that end up using a lot of good old DB script to do some really cool and, and fancy things, uh, which, uh, which might allow. So that's why they end up having this two way right now, because some users or some customers might have, um, you know, some reporting in which have some logic doing some stuff that the dev, uh, the dev express doesn't uh, develop yet for the extra, but uh, they didn't uh, define any time frames. They are encouraging people to use the extra. Uh, I'm already uh, doing some reporting and pushing some reporting and try to migrate some some of uh, some of the customers trying to use the uh, the extra because basically what extra does is just creates the PDF. So we are talking about only static reporting. So this is to substitute the art to create the PDFs or printed reporting like pay slips and stuff like that. So um, so we don't have time frames, uh, but I think the sooner for me the sooner the better. Thanks, Tiago. Now we've got a few more questions coming through. Um, let's start uh, at the bottom one. I saw Report Engine 9.3 U2 includes an ARC2 extra migration tool. Do we know how effective uh, is this tool? Is that something that we can answer, Tiago? Yeah. Well, the uh, all the trainings, all the training sessions, and all the uh, the manuals and the tests that I've been doing, well, uh, they are really simple when you don't have any complexity, <laughs> like everything. So, if uh, if you have a report that you want to create, uh, that you want to migrate, um, now you can. Um, you can migrate stuff to extra from ARW really straightforward and simple. Yeah. Now uh, you put the ARW and it can migrate. Now you can migrate from ARC to extra, uh, but it's just going to bring the SQL and the obvious things. Now, um, 
if if uh, if if you end up if you end up having different uh, you know different queries, you always it, it, you always going to have to verify because it might not bring the whole thing. Now on on the courses and on the information that they provide, we uh, are the ones responsible to you know all the database interactions that we have uh, that needs to be on the RESQL file. So you you actually going to have and drill down and see check all the queries that you have and make sure they are correct on the res well so uh the migration tool is not going to migrate the whole file it's going to bring the the sequels and uh it might it might use some formulas now there's there's something that there's something that they um while we are migrating and while we are changing um the sql from one uh, from one place to another they do um they do reference for us to use the tools uh, on the two on arc reports um map uh, data fields in the arc designer just to see on the migration process that all the fields are correct um but as i said on the uh, on the uh, on the on the migration tools if the report is simple it's straightforward it might you know show you a lot of stuff but um I, I i think it's always uh i think it's always complex because you know different customers end up having different reports with different kind of complexities and you know even that you end up having the tool that's going to migrate stuff you're always going to have to look at it at, at, at it and, and having a and having a um some tests and i would uh well i would run the uh the uh, i would run the um the migration tool but then most of the stuff will not work because things are much more complex for that. So uh, I would I would try to migrate. Then I would look at the. Basically, it's it's you're gonna have to look to so many things. In the end, you're gonna have to you know move the queries, move everything that you know, move the queries to build the data set, and then open the R the RPX file, put the RPX file pointing to those data sets to bring the data you know just start commenting all your uh just comment the whole lines on your arc report and start uncommenting and you know unleashing this little bit and that little bit so that in the end you can see if um if, if things end up working good so um so that's why uh we end up having two um architectures 32 and 64 bits so we can start migrating the files uh one by one with not such a hurry well, I hope that answers that particular question. Crazy. Now we, We've still got a couple um, of questions still to go. Once the reports are in RERX, are they automatically 64-bit? Uh, no. Uh, once the reports are on RERX... Sorry, sorry uh, Tracy, I was trying to... I was trying to find the question on the chat box. Uh, it's about the fourth one up uh, from the the bottom. Yeah, well, the uh, yeah. So uh, the RERX is intent to work with sixty four bits. So you create the RERX because you're going to have to create and populate. So it the RERX is going to build the report in a framework that will uh, it's going to build the report in a structure that can be read by 64-bit architecture server queues uh, but it, it's not the report that it's in 64 bits it's the technology that we are using to create the report that it's ready to be consumed in 64-bit architecture server queues but if you create your report and you have a 32-bit server queue you can just pick the RERS, rerx file drop the file on a customized reports of a 32 big server queue and it will work that's why uh and i'm, I'm just going to bring my i'm just going to bring uh my presentation all up to the beginning so we can properly answer this question uh just bear with me so i can bring everything up so depending on the version that you have we can give it a second. It's gonna be right in here. I just want to make sure that I'm giving the correct information for the retro compatibility on this. Okay, here we go. Oh, sorry. I want to start animation slideshow from this one. Okay, so 
The reports migrated from 32 to 63 bit, which you call it, are retrocompatible to 553 and to uh, 553 into as long as the reporting John 828 is installed. So you can create RERX files and use the RERX files in 32 bit queues. So when you create the RERX files, they are ready to be consumed in 64 bit uh, server queues, but you can drop those files on the 32 bit server queue as well and, and they will work as long as you have you know, the uh, report engine 828 installed. Okay, I hope for... I answered this question, Tracy. Okay, thank you very much. Um, one more question. Uh, where can we get information on the limitations of Res SQL Accelerator? Is that something we can answer today, Tiago? Sorry, if uh, how? Sorry, didn't get that. Where can we get information on the limitations of uh, RE SQL? Uh, well, you uh, might be able to find some information on the installation folder regarding um, regarding accelerator. Now, you might find some information, you know, some 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 information and how to migrate, how to show some limitations. But that's all that we have. Now, the guys from Unit Four are not the most um, the most expert in developing documentation. Even that, right now, we have a lot of stuff. Uh, I think we all, as you know, aggresso users, aggresso system admins, you know, aggresso uh, consultants, we end up learning much more from each other than actually from the documentation that they end up outputting. And and it's really cool, you know, to go to user conferences and talk with people and customers. We we end up learning a lot of stuff from from customers and and from super users and and from from colleagues and all that. And I think that's where we end up having. Um, a full understanding of how limitations we end up having on the accelerators. Now, uh, there's a, on the installation folder, there's a, there's a PDF that's gonna help you uh, on, an, on an overview regarding the accelerators. Um, and I think you're gonna be able to find there a bit more of information, but the rest is, you know, it's, it's, it's working and it's testing. And sometimes they say that things don't attach and, you know, someone end up finding a way of bringing that information or bringing that code or making that code working so we are um this 64 bit is something that it's ongoing right now there's some people already have there's some other people that are still on 32 so i think there's a lot of uh, room to cover in here and we are in here we we well we, we are based our information on whatever it's available on the um what it's available from unit four and some uh, examples and some experience, but not as much as we had like in 32 bits. But yeah, check the installation folder of your report engine. You're gonna find a little bit more of information in there, some example files and maybe some extra PDFs with some, with some infos. Okay, thanks for that. Now there's a couple of questions here with regard to training. Um, I think we'll pick those up after the session, if that's okay. Uh, just a couple of people wanting uh, information on the report courses that we provide. Um, and also uh, about some of the training days that we've got. So if, if everybody's happy for me to do so, I'll, I'll pick that up after the, the webinar has ended and we can have a chat about that. Now, also along with the, the actual um, training sessions that we offer, we also offer consultancy uh, to actually help you um, make the move across to 64 bits. So that is again something that we can help out on and I'm happy to provide any further information on that. Um, now I'm hoping that we've covered all of the, the questions. Obviously if we have missed any please do let me know. Um, I'm going to draw the, the webinar to a close because we're just coming up to an hour and um, we obviously like to keep it um, as interesting as possible. Um, so please let me know if there's anything further that you would like us to, to pick up. I'm going to draw the, the webinar to a close and I'd like to thank you very much uh, for joining us today. Uh, I hope you found it interesting. I have included the SurveyMonkey link in the chat box. I would really appreciate if you could provide us with some feedback. Let us know what we did well um, and any comments that you've got that we can make it better. Um, but if everybody is happy that uh, we, we've covered 
all of those questions. If not, drop me uh, an email. And um, thank you very much for joining us. And we'll see you again beginning of uh, May. Uh, it's the 9th of May at 2 p.m. for our next webinar, uh, which covers uh, the integration tool Jitterbit. Thank you very much. <laughs>